Bats are absolutely incredible animals. They're highly unique creatures that possess the extraordinary ability of powered flight. They are one of only four groups in the history of life on Earth that have ever evolved this remarkable method of locomotion, the others being insects, birds, and pterosaurs. And so, since they are the only group of mammals that have this ability, it's long been thought that every bat species must have descended from a common ancestor. In technical terms, this is known as a monophyletic group. An ancestral species gives rise to a radiation of other groups and species that can all trace back their evolutionary history to the common ancestor. But during the 1980s, a very interesting and controversial idea about bat evolution came to prominence, the flying primate hypothesis. An Australian neuroscientist at the University of Queensland named John Pettigrew was the one who first developed this idea in a paper published in 1986. Pettigrew examined the ways in which information from the retina is processed in a region of the midbrain in both bats and primates, and realised that there are some striking similarities between the way in which the connections between retina and brain are arranged in primates and the group of bats known as the megabats. Now is a good time to quickly explain what the evolutionary tree of bats looks like. The exact relationships of different bat groups has been a bit of a debate in recent years, but the traditional view looks something like this. The overall bat group, known as Chiroptera, splits off into the megabats, which are also called flying foxes, and the microbats. However, there's also a competing arrangement where the rhinolophoids, which are the horseshoe bats and their closest relatives, are united in a group with the megabats, changing the evolutionary tree to look more like this. The studies that support this view use evidence gained from genetic data, but future studies that look at both morphological and genetic characters will hopefully be able to show which tree has more support. So now that we've established what the internal structure of the bat group looks like, let's completely distort it as we take a look at what the flying primate hypothesis proposes. As I've already said, John Pettigrew identified some similarities between the connections of the retina to the midbrain region in primates and megabats. The way in which these are connected, he says in the 1986 paper, are completely unique to primates and megabats, and it's something that microbats and other mammals don't have. In later papers, Pettigrew and others also found evidence in brain, spinal cord, eye and limb anatomy that were seemingly unique to megabats and primates too. So, what would this mean for bat evolution? Well, Pettigrew proposed that instead of a monophyletic bat group, the megabats were actually more closely related to primates, and were not closely related to microbats at all. So, under this new arrangement, powered flight would have actually evolved on two separate occasions within mammals, once in the microbats, and once in the early relatives of primates and megabats. This is certainly a very unusual and unexpected outcome, but one that seemed to have some supporting evidence. It should also be noted that although it's called the flying primate hypothesis, and Pettigrew did refer to it as this in his papers, the classification that he proposed did not actually include megabats within the primate group. Instead, they are nested just outside the primates, forming a branch on the evolutionary tree that a paper Pettigrew co-authored in 1989 says, was comprised of moderate-sized gliders, of which the other living descendants are the Dermoptera. The Dermopterans are the flying lemurs, or colugos, small tree-living mammals that inhabit parts of Southeast Asia. So colugos, together with the megabats and primates, all formed a monophyletic group according to Pettigrew and others. And therefore, under this arrangement, it would seem that flight, or at least gliding, was a feature ancestral to the megabat primate colugo group. You could, therefore, even go as far as saying that that makes us humans a kind of flightless primate, as we've lost this ancestral character of flight in the process of our evolution. Of course, many people had issues with this idea right from when it was first proposed, and today it is not backed by the evidence at all. A paper published in 1988, just two years after the initial suggestion, pointed to a great deal of characteristics in the skeletons and soft tissue that both the megabats and microbats have in common, supporting the idea that the two groups are indeed part of a single monophyletic group together. Later papers also pointed out how Pettigrew's suggestion could be seen to be a highly erroneous conclusion, as it seemed he had claimed that one similarity between primates and megabats could outweigh all the characteristics that distinguish them and instead unite megabats with microbats. Many scientists also had problems with the idea that powered flight could have evolved two separate times within mammals, which seemed fairly unlikely. Other papers examined the features of different bats' wings and found that their characteristics supported a single bat group. And there are several genetic studies that all reject the flying primate hypothesis. DNA evidence has shown that primates do form a group with the previously mentioned colugos and also tree shrews, but bats are nowhere near them. 
Instead, there's more evidence to suggest that bats are united in a group with pangolins, carnivorans, artiodactyls, and perissodactyls. Carnivora is the group that cats and dogs are a part of. Artiodactyls include animals such as camels, pigs, whales, and hippos, and horses and rhinos are members of the perissodactyls, so that wouldn't exactly make bats very closely related to primates. There is still some debate about the internal structure of the bat family though, as I've mentioned, with some more recent studies supporting the grouping of megabats and rhinolophoids, the horseshoe bats and relatives, instead of rhinolophoids being part of the microbats. However, these studies still support the monophyletic grouping of bats as a whole, and the great deal of evidence in favour of megabats and microbats sharing a single common ancestor would seem to put to rest the flying primate hypothesis. Of course, don't expect this to be the end of the shuffling about of different mammal groups. Although we're getting closer to the true picture of the evolutionary tree, new data can always change things in unexpected ways. Hopefully you enjoyed this story of dramatic, controversial ideas of the phylogenetics of bats. This might have seemed like a completely pointless video to some people, but I just thought it was an interesting story of a very unexpected evolutionary relationship that some scientists once advocated, and the idea that a feature as unique as the bat wing could have evolved not just once, but twice, is a fascinating concept, even if it turned out not to be the case. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you would like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.